election. So we've got him over here tonight. And I'm sure uh, many of you who haven't heard it before will be most interested to hear what Bob has to say about the future of politics in Australia, where the Greens stand, and how we are positioned to make real changes for the future of this country. Please put your hands together and welcome Senator Bob Brown. I must begin by saying it's uh, great to be in this air conditioned. I come uh, from a state which is not the air conditioned. <laughs> and I found uh, the difference between the 18 degrees when I left Hobart to the 26 at uh, the airport here a testimony to the size of this country and to uh, the difference in very short uh, flights that we make these days to bring carbon dioxide out the back, of which I'm very well aware. I'm very lucky that uh, the back paddock of Liffey is growing up, this little place in the north, I don't really know about Liffey, um, because she comes from uh, the Liffey country too, on the other side of the planet. Uh, the, the 10 hectares is growing up and it's a tree is taking in 400 tonnes of carbon dioxide a year just by the forest growing. The birds like it, the wallabies like it, the possums do, and uh, the eagles do, and so do I. And I've got on my shirt a, big, a little uh, badge of the swift parrot. And I want to talk about that a bit at the outset because this creature goat has been uh, recently flying in the opposite direction to me. It was uh, when there was European settlement began in Australia, it was distributed from Adelaide to Sydney, right across the woodlands, uh, in massive numbers and flocks. And it goes to Tasmania for summer to nest and breed, and it comes back for winter. And uh, it's got a five grooved tongue. It's the only bird like it in the world for getting a eucalypt blossoms. It's also the fastest parrot on Earth. And um, like very fast movers so often, it can't stop talking. It chatters and whistles and goes, uh, whether it's on the branch or, or talking. And I've been um, challenging the federal government over the destruction of forests, uh, along with many other people, on the eastern seaboard of Tasmania where it nests, because if you're not there on the forest, then the swift parrot cannot breathe. No trees, no nests, no nests, no swift parrots. But uh, this hasn't impressed the federal authorities and the logging continues. This little bird, by the way, across, if you've been on the ferry across to Tasmania, it takes all night. The swift parrot does it in three hours. But I've had reason to change my campaign because I was walking 50 yards from home the other day and one of these little creatures flew straight at me. Uh, I had to duck. I don't, I've never read about this happening before. And it landed in a tree, two trees behind, and then it hopped to the one right over my head and glowed down. So I left. It's territory. Obviously, it's a very strong ter um, defender of its territory as well. They're down to a thousand breeding pairs. And the numbers have dropped by some hundred since 2003. And here we are in this great nation of Australia where all our wood for building, for, for uh, paper for all purposes can now come out of one and a half million hectares of plantations that we have but we're still logging native forests and woodlands right across uh, the uh, nation uh, particularly from Tasmania through to Queensland and the Tiwi Island north of uh, Darwin to make money and uh, it's one of those things we have to put to rights because if we stop the logging the needless totally needless destruction of forests and woodlands tonight, then Australia's greenhouse gas emissions, because when the forests fall, a lot of the, there's a lot of decaying matter, but they burn them. And out of the average forest coop in Tasmania per hectare comes 65,000 tonnes, per coop comes 65,000 tonnes of greenhouse gases going to the atmosphere. Those huge columns of smoke which form thunder clouds on top, with after the forestry Tasmania drops napalm, on the ancient forests 
which have been life-filled just weeks before or months before each summer. And if we stop that, we get a 20% reduction in greenhouse gases. Now, over in Canberra, where I'm going tomorrow, the Rudd government, which came to office vying with the Howard then government in 2007, saying we are going to tackle climate change, is going to get not a 20% reduction, but a 5% reduction through giving $16.5 billion to the biggest polluters. And it does that on the basis of the more you pollute, the more you get. And amongst uh, the polluters is the coal industry, 75% owned outside Australia, so you know where their share is going to go, which on the last time I looked, 2007 8 made $43 billion out of coal, mining and uh, exports as well as domestic use. And they're being handed out for billions of dollars and Mr Rudd and it was Mr Turnbull the same are going to give them billions more so that they can slow marginally the pollution. But here's the rub. I heard Ken Penny Wong on uh, national radio this morning. She's uh, had a paper done which will show that some 65,000 households and small business premises will be flooded or threatened with destruction through storm surges by the end of this century if the modest predi medium predictions of the International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change occur. That is a roughly one, one and a half metre sea level rise. And that will cost tens of billions of dollars. And that's going to happen on current projections, but it's also going to happen if the government succeeds in getting together with Mr Turnbull and putting through their 5% reduction by 2020 in greenhouse gas emissions. Why is that? Well, Australia is rapidly increasing its greenhouse gas emissions. In fact, since 1990, through the burning of fossil fuels, and that includes exhaust pipes out of cars as well as thermal power stations, we're putting 30% more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere uh, than 1990 already. Take away the slowdown in the clearance of native uh, vegetation, particularly in Queensland, and it doesn't seem so much. But we're burning it much more rapidly. And uh, here we have them going for a 5% reduction Effectively, that'll take us back to 2000 or 2005. By 2020, spending $16.5 billion, giving that to the polluters, and failing to give the bill up to the renewable uh, energy options, which would make this country one of the formidable environmentally based manufacturing. Uh, and know our countries on the face of the planet in an age where Sir Nicholas Stern, formerly the World Bank, one of the great economists who's been converted by the threat of uh, climate change, says those countries which have the, the best environmental basis of policy are going to be the economic winners this century. So we have got to deal in Canberra. I said to Northern Turnbull in February, shortly after he took the leadership. I believe you and the government will get together and pass this legislation before the end of this year. And it's not because I've got a crystal ball, but it's because we know how democracy is bought by those who have the power and the money. Machiavelli said 600 years ago, if you want to change the world, get ready to be crushed by those people who don't want to change because they've got the money and the power. Well, here we are in 2009, and we all should be reading Machiavelli. Because the big industries, mining, logging, to name two, have glass office buildings just across the road from Parliament House. And their lobbyists have overgone Penny Wong's door. She's, been, she's seen every coal company in Australia while drawing up this legislation. Many in the environmental and community group can't get her to see them. They can't get her to see them and they can't get to see her. But
but every single car company.